Hello kids! Today, you're going to learn the different modes of reproduction of flowering plants. In this lesson, the learning objective is describe the different modes of reproduction of flowering plants. Okay, so let's start with this. It's called Pair Me Up. What are you going to do? Match the words in the flower with their descriptions in the leaves. Okay, let's start from megaspore. So megaspore goes with this. It is the larger spore of a heterosporous plant, typically producing a female gametophyte. How about the next flower? Ovary. Okay, it goes with this one. Produces and contains the ovules which develop into seeds upon fertilization. The next flower is ferns. And ferns goes here. A flowerless plant that has feathery or leafy fronts. Then, pine trees. Okay, so pine trees, these are conifers or cone-bearing and carry both male and female sporophylls on the same mature sporophyte. And of course, our last flower. Sorry. Okay, goes here. Small brown dots or patches found under sides of fern leaves. Who among you love flowers? Why do you love them? Can you name some of them? Do you know how these flowers reproduce? Okay, so as I have mentioned earlier, today you're going to learn the different modes of reproduction in flowering plants. So, watch closely to this video that I'm going to show you. Happy friends, welcome to a new happy learning video. Plants, as all living things, need to meet the vital functions to be able to live. Nutrition, interaction, and reproduction. Today, we're going to get to know plant sexual reproduction. Plants have two very different ways of reproducing. They can have sexual or asexual reproduction. Today, we're going to get to know the first type. Sexual reproduction happens in the plant's flowers when a male sex cell joins a female sex cell. When time passes, this cell union produces a seed from which a new plant will grow. To get to know plants' sexual reproduction, it's important to know the parts of a flower and the functions each of these has towards reproduction. Happy friends, welcome to new happy learning video. Plants, like all living things, need to reproduce to perpetuate their species, to survive through time. Today, we're going to get to know plant asexual reproduction. In asexual plant reproduction, flowers don't intervene. There's no need for a gamete or female, a male cell. In asexual reproduction, there's only one parent. So the new plants will be genetically identical to this. New plants can originate from a single cell 
tissue, an organ or a part of a mother plant. There are two types of asexual reproduction. Vegetative reproduction and reproduction without seeds. Let's get to know them. What type of reproduction do flowering plants have if they produce new plants through other plant parts? That is, asexual reproduction. So this time, you're going to do this activity. It's entitled, Guess How I Become Many. The problem is, how do flowering plants reproduce? So the materials that you need are the pictures of flowering plants. Later on, you will see them. And the procedure, first, identify the flowering plants in the pictures. Next, think and identify how they reproduce. And finally, Classify them under the proper column by putting a check in the box. Now, look closely at these flowering plants. Are you familiar with them? Okay, so this is the table that you're going to complete. So we have the names of the flowering plant. Write them in the first column. Then, check if the flowering plant reproduce through seeds, through stem cutting, through leaf cutting, or through suckers or underground shoots. Okay, I'll give you five minutes to do this. A few moments later. A few moments later. Alright, let's check your work. So, rose. It reproduces through stem cutting. Katakataka, through leaf cutting. Banana, through suckers or underground shoots. The same with ginger. Tomato is through seeds. San Francisco, that is through stem cutting. Welcome plant reproduces through leaf cutting. Santol through seeds. Santan through stem cutting. And beans through seeds. Flowering plants reproduce sexually and asexually. Sexual reproduction starts in the flower which produces seeds. Sexual reproduction in plants takes place when flowers produce seeds after pollination and fertilization. Pollination is the transfer of pollen grains from the anther to the stigma of the same or of another flower of the same time. Fertilization takes place in the ovary when the sperm cell unites with the egg cell. The ovary becomes the fruit, the ovules becomes the seeds. Asexual reproduction is producing new plants wherein no sex cells, no seeds are involved. Flowering plants reproduce through other plant parts like stem, leaves, and suckers. Why is reproduction in flowering plants important to humans? Reproduction in flowering plants are very important not only to humans, but also to other animals. Just imagine the world without these flowering plants. It's merely a dull world. They serve as the major source of food for humans and animals. They provide natural medicines and a lot more. If reproduction doesn't take place, their kinds will not exist anymore. We cannot see these flowering plants around. What might happen to humans if flowering plants do not reproduce anymore? If flowering plants do not reproduce anymore, humans will be hungry because we get some of our food supply from these plants. K. 
kids remember that sexual reproduction in plants takes place when flowers produce seeds after pollination and fertilization. Asexual reproduction is producing new plants wherein no sex cells, no seeds are involved. Flowering plants reproduce through other plant parts like stem, leaves, and suckers. Okay, so it's quiz time. Choose the letter of the best answer. Number one. Which of the following plants are propagated by leaves? A. Banana B. Rose C. Katakataka D. Malunggay Write your answer on your paper. Number two. Which of these plants is not grown from seeds? A. Tomato B. Potato C. Beans D. Tamarind Number 3. How do avocado, eggplants, squash, and ampalaya reproduce? Asexually B. Asexually C. Both sexually and asexually Letter D. Neither A or B Number 4. Which of the following does not describe sexual reproduction in flowering plants? A. Flowering plants reproduce through seeds. B. Flowering plants reproduce through other plant parts. C. Sexual reproduction takes place when there is fertilization. Letter D. Sexual reproduction takes place when flowers produce seeds. Last number, number 5. Which of the following statements is true about asexual reproduction in flowering plants? A. Asexual reproduction is producing new plants through other plant parts and no sex cells are involved. Letter B. Asexual reproduction takes place when flowers produce seeds. Letter C. Fertilization takes place in asexual reproduction in plants. And letter D. Asexual reproduction requires pollination in flowers. Alright, let's check your work. Who got five? Okay, good job. Congratulations. You have completed again our lesson for today. For your offline activity, identify how the following flowering plants reproduce. Write sexually or asexually on the blank. Thank you, kids. I hope you learned a lot today. So this is Teacher Marianne saying... Goodbye and enjoy the rest of your day.